Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to my show. This is Brandy J, Voices of Courage, um, The Impact. And I got to say something really quick because, uh, Michael, you just said making impact. And just yesterday, I was rescripting my show. And the theme I put next to it was impact. So that's definitely a sign that this is supposed to happen today. <laughs> that's giving me um, chills. But uh, here we are. And I have an uh, I find to be an amazing, I couldn't let him get away, guys. An amazing guest by the name of what's Michael Anthony, but Michael, you go by Brooke. So I was like, is that his, is it Michael Broken? I was like, no, Brandy, that's broken <laughs> at the moment. But thank you for being here today. How are you doing? Yeah, it's my absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for spending some time with me tonight. Um, I'm amazing. I'm ready to rock and roll. You know, you it's, know, it's um, um, an honor, honor to be here, here with you. Yes, yes. It's, uh, I'm honored. I'm like, oh, my goodness. I'm still, I'm going to act normal, guys. I promise. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, Michael, you are amazing. Uh, you have, a, you're a best selling author. Uh, you've been around the world speaking, uh, what, 80 different countries? Mm -hmm. and impacted like a hundred thousand people's um lives uh helping them to to get through uh trauma right with the verb yeah. vortex yeah. trauma yeah it's, yeah, been, it's an been an amazing journey. journey um and it all started just because i was like you know i i read somewhere one time like if you are if you learn something you have a moral obligation to share it. And like, honestly, that's all I'm doing. I'm just sharing the things I learn in the hopes that, you know, children growing up and adults like us um, don't have to continue this cycle of generational trauma. Um, and we can get to this place where, you know, ultimately to just to be straight up, like I would love to make myself obsolete. I would love for people to be like, why would anyone ever want to read that book or go to that event or listen to that podcast? Cause it won't matter anymore. So, you know, that that's my mission to end generational trauma in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's amazing. So you, um, so what was your, before this, did you, you have a backstory, right? There's a, a something that got, so the question is, what is your, your, your why or your what? or your who, like what got you to this point where, where you're helping so many people? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think that first and foremost, like anyone, it started with myself, you know, over 11 years ago, I started getting really, really serious about my own mental health, my own physical health, my emotional, spiritual health, my personal development journey, you know, the whole nine. And, you know, you go back five years ago, six years ago, I, there's a 0% chance we're having this conversation. You know what I mean? Yeah. That that was never a part of it. Like I never had any intention on doing any of these things. I was just trying to take care of myself. And and I'm not I'm not perfect. I'm not special. I don't know anything anyone else does. I I screw up all the time. I promise you this. It's just that I I thought to myself, well, you know, what if? Right. And, and I think that that's a really powerful precursor to creating change in the world is you just simply have to to sit with something and acknowledge it and look at it and go, well, what if I was willing to do this? What if I was willing to be the one to stand up for what I believe in? What if I was the one to I mean, like ultimately and look, childhood trauma is like this terrifying subject matter, yet it impacts statistically 83% of people in America, I would argue it's higher, probably 95% when you factor in non-reports, when you factor in households that say, don't ever talk about things that happen in this house outside of it. And then you look at the impact and the ramification that has on the world. And, and I sit here and I just look at it and I go, you know, I don't want to go to my deathbed having suffered everything that I suffered and be like, hmm, could have done something, but I didn't. So it's really in one sense, it's, I don't know, in one sense, it's selfish, right? Because of my mission, because of what I want. And in the other sense, it's like, maybe one day my brothers will read my book. You know what I mean? Or listen to my podcast or, you know, hang out with me in, in this way that we go to the next level. And I'm not saying that will or will not ever happen. But, you know, I, I think that first and foremost, it's it's about, you know, creating tools to show people that no matter what we come from, we can still go and have the life that we want to have. I like that very much. That's a, that's a powerful message uh, because I feel like people don't even realize when they're doing it, but they 
when you speak those words and they limit themselves and say, yeah, that can't happen. There's, you know, they use their traumas or what they've been through to, um, you know, like to end the road of like, they can't go to where they're trying to go or get to where they trying to get because of that. And I, I like that message. And I just think so many more people, you know, need to hear that. So I appreciate you for what you're doing because uh, like I said, we're not perfect. And if you look at the world today, we are all, could use a lot of help. <laughs> yeah. And and look, ultimately, I, I think people really need to understand the power of the words that they use with themselves. You know, that that's kind of the thing that people get lost in. You know, you're you're it's so funny to me right now. Like you're saying things to yourself that if you said to me, you'd get punched in the face or arrested and you're expecting yourself to be successful, right? You're pulling yourself down. You're beating yourself up. You're you're letting other people's languages be the your vernacular, right? Be the way that you talk to yourself in the world. And so many people are so unkind, yeah. right? And you go, I'm not good enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not capable enough. All that stuff comes from the people before you. All that stuff comes from the teachers who tell you, don't color the moon purple. You know, it comes from the, the parents who tell you, don't go after your dreams. Or even worse, if you have parents like mine, you know, they're terrible and they beat you and they hurt you and they do all these crazy things that break you down and turn you outward of a human being and into this zombie and this robot who doesn't believe in themselves. And then you're 28, 36, 52 years old. And you're like, why can't I seem to get my life together? Because you're still repeating that narrative, right? You're still telling yourself the same thing they told you. And you're expecting your life to be different, but it's not going to be. Why? Here's the thing. People are always talking about mindset right now, right? But nobody ever tells you what the hell it means. So I'm going to tell you what it actually means. In front of me right now, you can't see it. Or if you're listening, you can't see it. It's a giant sign that says mindset is everything. Let me tell you what that means. What you think becomes what you speak. What you speak become your action and your action become your reality. So if you're living your life in this scope of I'm not good enough, smart enough, capable enough, you're going to act that way. And because you are acting that way, it's going to turn into your reality. Ah, okay, cool. Maybe we have some causation here. Now let's look at it from the other side of it. This is the first thing I teach my clients. You grab a pen, right? This thing right here that is arguably more important than any other tool that you have access to right here, this thing called a pen and a piece of paper. And you write down and you convince yourself of this until it's true. I am the kind of person who is kind to myself. I am the kind of person who is kind to myself. Now you might be thinking like, why the hell does that matter? I will tell you why. Great question. The reason why it matters is because when you change your narrative for yourself, the things happening up here in your head through the scope and the framework of kindness, you will act that way. Huh? Think about this. How does a kind person talk to themselves? How does a kind person act? What kind of reality does a kind person live in? Right? Because when you move through this scope in this space of kindness, you think about it like this. What would I do if I were kind to myself? And then you're faced with this really interesting juxtaposition where on one hand, as you're growing and you're changing and you're moving into what's next in your life, you, you start to level up, right? You're faced with different challenges, different obligations, different tasks, different difficulties, different understandings of who it is that you are. And then you kind of slide back for a moment, right? You go, ah, I don't know. Is this really who I am? Do I deserve this? Right. Some of that's blame, shame, guilt, judgment, stuff we carry from our past. And then you ask yourself this question. Am I taking care of myself or am I taking it easy on myself? Because those are two very different things. And people get caught up in creating massive change in their life because they come to this scope where for lack of a better term, it's, it's a settling in process, right? You go, oh man, I, I went to therapy once or twice. I went to the gym a couple of times. You know, I got a coach. I read a couple of books. I listened to podcasts. I'm good, right? And then you revert. You go back to past behaviors and you're like, oh shit, how'd I get here? 
I'll tell you how you got here because you got too comfortable. What life is about growth, life is about expansion, life is about going to what's next. And the moment you stop doing that, you start to fall back. And then you ask yourself this question, am I operating as a person who is kind to themselves? Because if the answer is yes, then you know that the only way you're going to continue to create massive change in your life, you're going to have to keep doing hard things and be okay with being discomfortable uncomfortable, excuse me, and push yourself beyond what you think you're humanly capable of, because I'm going to tell you right now, what you think you can accomplish and what you actually can accomplish are two very different things because people think that they're limited. Oh man, I'm from this background. I had this experience, blah, blah, blah. And then they get in this position in life where they just sit there and they look at it and go, this is what I deserve. This is going to be my life. And if you're okay with that, that will be your life unless you make a decision. I just wanted to stand up and just clap right now. <laughs> so seriously, like, like, because I mean, I, I think a lot, you know, and I, and, and I, I take things in, which people don't do. They just talk a lot. They don't ever listen it hear, and then listen or think they just talk. And I was thinking one day, I was like, people should start being kinder to themselves. And in my head, I'm seeing all these uh, erratic people like, I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> but I'm like, you should be nicer to yourself because if you were, you would be nicer to each other. But like, it is, it's a part of a healing. And like, if you don't love yourself or you're not being kind to yourself, then there's no way that you're going to really show it to, you know? So it's kind of like, you. would you agree that you kind of look how someone will, how they treat themselves? Like how you were saying, um, like we don't push ourselves to know that we uh that we could do more like we'll bust our butts away at a, a job where we know we don't want to be and it's really um not really get getting us you know and you'll just you know basically some my, my cousin on darn near died at the working these jobs that he didn't really want to be at but he need the money versus if there's a goal you want to achieve in life and you go after it, but you find all these excuses not to do it or, you know, just to, you know, to not have to go through maybe not succeeding, whatever it may be. But it's to me, I find it a little absurd that you would put all that effort into this here, but you won't put that much into yourself. Yeah. You know, here, here's what I think about literally every day, like actually every day of my life, I would rather die trying to do what I want to do with my life than regret on my deathbed, having never done what I wanted to do. And, and that's a very difficult thing to, to reconcile with. Right. I mean, look at this. I, I come from nothing. I should be dead or in jail. I was homeless as a kid. My had crazy abusive appearance. You know, my, my mother cut my finger off when I was four years old. My stepdad was a crazy raging, like violent person who put me in the hospital. I spent most of my childhood homeless and in poverty. We got evicted like 30 times. I mean, I, we were so poor. I grew up in Indianapolis, in Indiana, in the middle of America. I grew up in a city. It was like the 12th biggest city in the country. We were so poor, they cut off our electricity. They cut off our water. They turn off our heat in the middle of winter, right? Think about that. Like you're, you're set up in this way where you're built for failure, and then I got to high school and then it got really bad, right? Because at 12 years old, I got high for the first time. At 13, I got drunk. At 15, I got expelled for selling drugs. And I was like, yo, I guess my life's over. I was about to be the only person like in my high school to not graduate from a high school where they just hand you the diploma. I was a laughing suck. I was the kid that everybody else made fun of because I was so dumb. But I wasn't dumb. I, A, I hated school, right? Just to be straight up, I think school is nonsensical. B, I put myself in this position of always being in precarious situations because I created bonding in my life by connecting with people who were not going in the same direction that I knew if I wanted to be successful in life, I'd have to remove myself from. But there was brotherhood there, right? There's peace there. There's connection there. There's that thing that we long for. And, you know, I'm out running the streets. I'm still in cars, breaking into houses, selling drugs, hurting people. I get put into a last chance program, right? Luckily, still don't graduate high school on time. 
still don't graduate high school on time. And so I'm looking at my life here. I'm totally embarrassed. Like I, I've to this day, I've never been as embarrassed as not graduating from a school that it's impossible to not graduate from. All you got to do is go. That's it. I didn't go. I missed like 91 days my senior year. And, um, and so I go to the, my, my teacher's classroom, shout out Mr. Bush, I'll never forget him till the day I die. Most important moment of my life right here. He walks up to me and I'm, I walk up to him, excuse me. And I'm pissed, right? I'm 18. I think I'm everything. And, uh, I go, why did you fail me? He looks at me and goes, I didn't fail you. You failed yourself. Mm. And I'm an irate child. I'm 18 years old. You know what I mean? Like that, whatever he just said, that means nothing to me. <laughs> but but then he goes, he says something really interesting. And this, this singular statement has propelled me to where I am in my life and will take me to where is next. Because I really feel like I'm only just tapping into what I'm building. And he said this to me and it changed everything for me. He goes, what you need to understand about life is you cannot get by on your charms and your good looks. If you want something, you're going to have to earn it. And he sent me to summer school. And then in that moment, like being in that place, being in that situation, looking at all these people around me and just being like, there are people in this room. This is as good as it's ever going to get for them. And I made a choice in that moment, like sitting there, like, cause you're in this room with all these other people who were in the same situation as me. So I'm not casting judgment. I want to be clear about that, but I was taking inventory of real time. What was happening? And then I just looked at it and I said, these people are going to end up dead or in jail. That's where I'm going to make a decision. And I decided, I said, by the time I'm 21, I want to make a hundred thousand dollars a year legally. Now this part was super important because my three childhood best friends today, they've been murdered and it was all over drugs. It was all over the same things I was doing. I saw the future. I saw it, it was right there. And so in that, I said, let's go to work. Let's figure it out. Well, fast forward a few years as I'm heading into 21, I land a job with a fortune 10 company, no high school diploma, no college education, right? Fortune 10 company. That's impossible unless you decide it's not fast forward. Mindset. I've written a number one best-selling book impossible unless you decide it's not award-winning speaker, traveled the world, done things that people where I come from don't do because I decided. And so here's the thing. This is a long diatribe to the answer to this question that you asked me. The reason why your cousin's life isn't successful in the scope of what they want is because they haven't made a fucking decision yet. And that's the truth about life. You have to make decisions. You have to choose what you are willing to do to have the life that you want to have. And that starts with a very simple question. You go and you look at yourself in the mirror and you say, what am I willing to do to have the life that I want to have? And if the answer is anything less than whatever it takes, then you're lying to yourself. And then you get to suffer in doing things that don't bring value to your life. But when you make that choice, which is a choice, I assure you, you don't get to complain about it because you decided to put yourself there. And I don't want to look, and I know people are going to hear this and they're going like, that guy is so intense. He's so hard about life, man. All those bad things made, must've made him a hard case. I just taught you guys about kindness. I'm honest. I've seen the truth of the reality of the decisions. I've seen the I've seen the like the eulogies and 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 the the paper when it comes out and your best friend's name in it. And you were supposed to be with him that night. I've been there, right? And so the thing that I want people to really understand and what I want people to take away from everything, everything is you have choices to make in life. Yes, we get set up for failure. What are you going to do about it? Because guess what? Nobody cares. Like, I'm sorry. I hate to break it to you. I hate to break your heart. I hate to tell you the truth right now. Nobody cares. There's no Disney moment and nobody's coming to rescue you. You keep on hanging out, blaming everybody else for your problems. Your life's not going to change. W one of the people I love more than anyone on planet Earth, Stormy Wellington, went from a homeless 
homeless with children to a millionaire to homeless to a millionaire. Don't talk to me about the fact that you hate your job, that your boss ain't giving you enough hours. That's your problem. That ain't their problem. Be yeah. good. Look, here's the truth. You want to figure out how to do it? I'll, I'll lay it out to you right now. I know I'm on like this diatribe, so bear no, with me. I'm hey, almost done. I promise. Me. Give it to us. <laughs> I, I want people to understand this. Skill has utility in life. So I'm going to say that again. Skills have utility in life. This is what my mentor taught me that has transformed my life forever. When you learn skills, you have a life that is according to the amount of information that you have in your brain that you can use to make the world different or better. You have to have skills to be able to go what's next in life. Think about this. Real talk. I'll share this on the social media. It's in my book everywhere. I graduated high school. I graduated high school with like a 1.2 GPA, right? Missed 91 days my senior year alone. Didn't graduate high school on time. I am not that intelligent. I promise you. But I learned a bunch of skills. I promise you I'm going to read 71 books this year. I promise you I'm consuming information that makes my life better every day. I'm not hanging out with my boys going to the club and the bar. I'm not buying stuff that I can't afford. I'm not living this life to keep up with other people. And most importantly, when people judge me, because this is where people get, this is where everyone gets stuck. Everyone gets stuck right here. I'm going to give you the difference to fill the gap. Everyone gets stuck right here. They go, I want that life. I want to, you know, go build my dream. I want to quit the job doing the thing I hate. I want the relationship I deserve. I want, I want, I want. And the reason they don't go for it is because they're embarrassed that they don't know how to do it yet. They're worried about other people judging them. Well, guess what? Everybody's judging you already. So you might as well do it anyway. Ah, right. <laughs> and that's the reality. That's the truth about life. Like, I, I believe inherently we all have the power to be great. It is in here. It's here. But you're scared. I'm scared too. I'm scared every day. I'm scared to be on this podcast right now. What if I say the wrong thing? What if I do the wrong thing? What if they hate me? What if I cuss too much? What if I don't cuss enough? What if I blah, 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 right? You know what I mean? You show up anyway. Face your fear. And that's powerful. That's empowering when you do do those things that you fear. And then you realize you don't care what the hell people were saying in the first place. And it's like after that, you just want to keep doing it you know once you meet those levels you keep achieving things that you want you're like i can do it do it do it you're like oh bye <laughs> like you know and um but like you said like you do you learned all this and you went through all this but you didn't just take it and run and go about your life you helped others you gained knowledge you got to where you got and then you're like let me use this to help somebody else get here too and um that i think that's important very important. Yeah. I'm um, giving you the game. Yeah. These are the plays. These are the plays. People are always like, yo, hit me with the play so I can go flip and make, you know, 10 G's today. This is the play. This is the way you do it. Give me the play. I want to graduate college. I want to be the first one in my family. This is the play. This is how you do it. Make a decision, put in the work, learn the skills because skills have utility, but start with the way that you're talking to yourself. It's, I mean, this is a ladder. You are climbing a rung every single day. Boom, 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 boom. And when you hit these walls, which you will, I promise, as much as I, I know the sun will come up in the morning, I know that you're going to mess up. How do I know? Because I mess up every single day. It's human nature. But people are terrified of failure. Again, that's that embarrassment thing. Failure is beautiful. I love failure. Why? Because in failure, you learn. If you are never failing, you are not living. You are not trying. That goal that you have, it's not going to happen if you aren't failing on your way to it. You know, I think there, there's so many amazing things about being willing to be vulnerable enough to fail that are impactful in ways that will transform your life forever. Right. And because of that, you know, it's, it comes from the time that we're children, we're shamed. Right. People go, man, you, you suck at basketball. I do. I'd still to this day. I don't care. I'm, not, I'm great. What I'm really good at. Right. Wow, and so like, I, I'm not good at being in educational settings. Nope. Not my vibe. 
right? I'm not good at public speaking. I am an introvert by nature. I don't even like talking to people, right? At least that used to be. All these things used to be. And I made decisions. I made choices. I learned skills. I put myself in uncomfortable situations to grow. Go and put yourself in uncomfortable situations and watch what happens. Now, look, here's what's really important because people are going to miss the boat on this. Everything that I do is about my goal. What's my goal? To end generational trauma in my lifetime. Well, how do you do that? You educate people. You write books. You host your own podcast. You speak around the world. You do all these things, right? Great. That's my goal. That's my North Star. That's the thing that drives me to keep doing this. I've been up since seven o'clock this morning working. Most days I get up at 5 a.m., right? I decided to sleep in a little bit today because I wasn't feeling great. Don't feel great in this moment. Guess what? Show up anyway. You That's get in I'm here and you do it. <laughs> it's easy to cancel. It's easy yeah. to be like, man, I got a headache and a runny nose and it's COVID. So who knows? You know what I'm saying? It's easy to cancel, but it's a lot more difficult to show up because you said you were going to. And that's the thing, because I'm so in alignment with my goal. If I were in bed, shaking with the chills, dripping in sweat, I would still be here because I said I was going to be. Mm -hmm. And the first sign of distress, people bail on their dreams. Yep. Stop bailing on your dreams and write them down. Write down that goal, right? Think about it, though, right? If it's money, fine, whatever. I don't care. Go do you. If it's fame, fortune, doesn't matter. Go do you. If it's something that you want to do that creates massive impact in the world, great. Do you. doesn't matter what it is. It just matters that it's true for you. It's honest for you. It's in your spirit, your heart, your soul. It's given to you. You look at it and go, yes, that is what I want. And then you show up day in and day out for 17 years till it happens, right? People go, man, my dream didn't come true. It's been six minutes. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> no, no, you don't say. Keep going. Look, I've been doing this for 11 years. You just met me. You know what I'm saying? Like, God, like that's the thing. I just, it breaks my heart when I, when I think about this idea that we have greatness right in front of us. Yeah. yeah. And yet we quit yeah. right there at the finish line because yeah. you couldn't be a little more patient. Yeah. It's like we want it. Do we like we say we can't have it because of you know the things that we've seen or been through? And then when we like, okay, I, I want it, but it's like it's not here fast enough, you know. And I was saying this to somebody the other day, right? Just how like you were talking, like how you're talking to me right now. I can tell you're passionate. You love what you do. You can you can tell, right? I did this show the other day. I was having like kind of like a little mentor lecture thing about po podcasting. What I did to to make sure that I didn't stop. I, I did the, the work. I knew that if I didn't make it past that third show and I got a little lax, that there was a good chance that I was never going to go back into it. So I strategically podcasted every day, every single day, dropped this podcast for 365 days on purpose, right? It's gangster. And, and I'm passionate about it. And I was telling people, even if you don't listen to me and you go look up somebody else's um skills or things you do to get to, uh to, into getting into podcasts and have a successful podcast. It's going to say when you ch pick your show or your topic, you should choose something that you love to talk about, something you're passionate to talk about because your listeners, will, you'll be into it. You know about it. And your listeners, your audience will listen to you more because they see that you like it and you're passionate about it. And and then it was like, what? You have to be I'm like, dude, you do. And, and this wasn't even me just because I read it. I felt it. Just like now, like you're talking, you're not thinking like I'm passionate. You just are because this is what you love to do and you want to do and you know it is. And to me, I find that to not feed a hunger, like somebody's just have to starve and it's like, don't you gotta get something to eat? You know, like if I'm not doing what I love, then what am I doing? <laughs> you know, like really. And that's all yeah. I want to get. And I think about this too, like do what you love, but also understand like you're gonna have to do the minutia. You're gonna have to do the things that are boring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my God, they're so boring because you have done it 9,000 times. Like you're doing you'll that be again. proficient <laughs> in it. You'll be proficient. It will be a skill. It will have utility. So you look, You have, people think it's all like glitz and glamour, right? They're like, man, you got this, you got that. I'm like, well, but do you know what they're actually doing? 
Do you know about the, the 10,000 hours times five that people are doing to create the life that they want to have? Right. It's not about like people get caught up in social media. It's like you want Lambos and stuff. I can go rent one right now. There's a place up the road. I can go stand in front of that. Talk to you about how great my life is. But the truth is the reality is I'm impacting the world. I'm in this office or on an airplane pretty much all the time. You know what I mean? And like, that's the truth about it. Like, do I want to be able to do all those things that people do? Of course I do. Right. But are you willing to grind? Are you willing to go through it? Because if you're not sure about that North star, you're not going to same reason. Like after three episodes, you could have been done. We wouldn't be having this conversation, but you made a decision. That's the thing. Like, I really want people to understand like this whole conversation is about making decisions. It's, but it's that mental thing that I tell people, like, it's, it's one thing to be, like, physically, like, chained and chained or locked up. There's a whole nother when you're mentally, like, you know, have, like, locked up in your own brain where you feel like all you got to do is just, like, like just do it. <laughs> Maybe even if you got to push, just, just just do it. and Because there's nothing literally stopping you. And that's how crippling fear or, you know, not wanting to fail and other people. And uh, like you say, it goes back to that mindset. Powerful. Very powerful. Wow. Can I ask you a question? I mean, <laughs> sure can. And then people can watch your magic unfold right now in front of, right here. <laughs> okay, so, you know, you were just talking, we were talking about, because um, they know that's important to have that plan and know your why, your A to your Z, you know, so, so you know, while you're doing what you're doing, it, it's always makes sense because you already know where the goal, what the goal is. So I originally, um, I was teaching for like nine and a half years up until pre-COVID in a charter school. Um, I usually have kinder first, kinder first, second, third. I'm gonna go past that. That's when they get a little smart mouths. But that's the um, the age group I usually have. But uh, being in the setting of uh, you know, working at these schools, like some of the things you even talked about, you know, I seen and I saw where what was missing and what kids needed. Then I, I saw bullying at its finest. You know, my son got bullied. So there's nothing anybody could tell me because I'm here and I'm watching it and no one's doing anything. It, it messed me up pretty bad. I tried to quit. It was it's, it was pretty bad. But I knew that I had to do something because it, I noticed everywhere I sent him, it was not being um, it was something that the teachers, the staff were not do anything about and then I realized start talking to people all across you know with podcasting and stuff all across the world as far as Africa just how much this happens and, and how me how how high the suicide rate was so I had already started doing this before the bullying thing became apparent I did my research but that's always been something I, I've been working on it's hard to get people sometimes people don't really relate to stuff unless it's right there in their face or it's happening to them uh, or maybe I'm just not doing it right. I could admit, but I know that this all ties together because I'm a podcaster. I have a radio show and we do producing and all that stuff too. Those are just skills. Now, now I'm listening to you. I'm like packaging, like, okay, this is what you do. These are all the skills that you're building. You're learning this stuff. They're your skills. Cause I'm like, okay, my brand, <laughs> you know what I mean? I was sitting down trying to break this all down the other day with my brand. Right. But then I'm like, okay, Brandy, what's the goal? What is it that you ultimately you want to do? You want to change? I want to help children navigate through this fucked up world um, that no one seems to be paying any attention to they, they, them, you know? And I feel like no matter what happens, I feel like that's where I, I belong at when it comes to my place in this world is to look after the children and to make sure because they're our future, you know, and they need it. And how can, it, you know, so that's just like my whole thing. Like, how does, how do I, what's not connecting? What do I need to make connect? Like, okay, yeah, great. I'm a podcaster and I am, and I love it. And I know I do do shows on bullying, but I'm so passionate, Michael. I talk about, I, I have value for human life. The stuff we're talking about and boils my skin, what's going on in this world today. So could it be that I'm just too passionate that I just can't, like, is that a possibility that somebody could just be? No, I, I think you have to think about something like how do kids learn? Right. What do, yeah. How do kids learn? They consume. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. right they consume what do they consume they especially kids of that age they consume books with pretty pictures in them right and they consume you know moving visual and audio entertainment with messages in it right Right. and i think like if you want to create impact like at that scale when it directly comes to children like i I literally just as you're saying this i'm putting myself in your shoes i'm like i just make a kid's book and then i make a kid's youtube channel and then I make a kid's television show and I would make a kid's animation and I would make a kid's video game for their phone. And then I would go and speak at all these schools and I'd have a mascot and I'd go in and I'd talk about that. Right. And and I think, you know, again, you're 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 always in this position where it starts with step one. Like, what could you do today to impact? Like, literally, what could you do today to impact change in the world around bullying in schools with children? You can go talk to schools. You were a teacher. You know how this works. You go and you find the schools. Hey, I want to talk about this. Great. Let's do it. And then you rinse and repeat that. Right. And, and I think like there's no such thing as overly passionate, but there is so much of like, I'm in my head. I can't execute. And, yeah. and so much of this is execution. Right. Yeah. I think so much of creating change in the world is edu- execution is putting yourself on the playing field. Right. Because dreams never, ever, ever come to fruition without a lot of work. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, again, I think, you know, think about it. Right. And and to me, I, like when I was a kid, you know, I got bullied all the time, I got bullied for being homeless. I got bullied for wetting the bed. I got bullied for, um, you know, stealing clothes from the lost and found and wearing them to the school the next day. I got bullied for stealing food because we were poor. I got bullied for everything. Right. And, and, you know, you think about that and like kids need resiliency. They need, they need someone to believe in them. They need someone to tell them like, yo, it's going to be okay. And then they need somebody to listen when they are ready to talk. And, you know, I thought, (laughs) you know, I thought for a long time about like, like, how do you really end bullying? Like, what does it take? And, you know, so much of it is about understanding like those kids who are bullying, think about what's happening in their homes. Mm -hmm. My answer used to be like what I used to think about to end bullying. I was like, how do you end bullying? You punch them in the face. (laughs) But that doesn't solve the problem when their dad's already doing it to them. You know what I'm saying? And so it's it's so much about about the education. It's so much about the tools and and really just figuring out how to tap into, you know, giving children a mindset that's really laid within the foundation of possibility before they get corrupted by the reality of the world that we live in. Mm -hmm. And if you're young and you're me and you're like a kid like me or my siblings, and you're going through that at such a young age, like just to be straight up, like outside of somebody literally taking us from our home, I don't know how anything would have changed for us, you know? And so it's a, I think anytime you're going to be on a great mission, it's an uphill battle. So you just yeah. got to ask yourself, am I willing to go to war? Yeah. Yeah. I've been at war for two years. I think where I got, got, the, and, and I didn't get uh, like, um, like where I did, I felt discouraged because I'm still going hard, you know, like totally. it's all I've been, you know, I, I've got to, I got to, cause I'm, I'm with this youth center called ABC youth center. I don't know if you heard of Archie Moore, the boxer. Mm-hmm. Um, back in the day, well, his son Billy Moore is a friend of mine, and he has the ABC Youth that my son's a part of, and I tutor there. So he's always supportive, and so I got to, you know, I, m- execute a little bit my bullying the program on the kids that summer, you know, through COVID through um, you know, online, and so that was pretty cool to just to just to see how far, you know, and this was just online. I could go with this, and then the ideas, and then you said some very important. That the bully, I always tell people it's pain on both sides. So like mm-hmm. the bully is probably being bullied at home. There's something going on at home. And when they come here, they do this, they feel powerful, and then take it out on the, you know, this one here, you know, and I feel like it doesn't do it any justice if we just focus on having things for someone that's being bullied. I was like, what about someone that's doing the bullying? That's very important. That's a teachable moment too. And they can grow and understand one another. You know, because I feel you said something very important about how do you get rid of bullying? And then I came to a conclusion because I look around the world and the world's a bully. I said, I don't think we get rid of it, but we build our children up to build them in a way where they're not so affected by it. Because you know, I've noticed bullies have a target. They always used to go for the the ones that were really easy to pull that stuff on, make them look bad, make them feel bad. You know, they weren't going to do anything or say anything. 
You know, you make sure you're, you give your child a voice and you let them know when you go to school, they can't just call you these names. I would tell my students, they'd be like, Miss Brandy, he called me blah, 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 blah. I'm like, well, are you stupid? First of all, he's like, no. I said, all right, well, we got that part covered. So you understand. So burn's gone a little bit. I said, but it's still not okay that he said that to you. And now we'll go address it. But first, we need to make sure you understand that just because he said it doesn't make it true. You know, mm -hmm. you have to address those things and you have to build kids up. And I feel like that's where it's going to start. We let our, we have to, like, some parents don't get it because they, you know, come from old school. And, and like I was telling somebody the other day, I was like, do my cousin used to sit there with a belt and while her daughter was doing homework? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> I was like, so she gets the answer wrong, she's gonna, she can't even think straight. Like, that's the type of stuff. Like, even if we pick up, pick those things up growing up, we got, that's some stuff we gotta let go. Can you, how about I hold a belt to you and see if you can do the same thing? <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's just they, they from all sides. They can't get it's never enough. Yeah, and, and look, I think that's part of the you know, that's part of the thing, right? You have to be willing to have uncomfortable conversations with people, especially if they're friends or family about things like that. I mean, you can go point and look at the re the research tells you everything that you need to know about child abuse, mm -hmm. right? The research shows you they, there's been multiple studies about the impact of childhood trauma and long-term detrimental health ramifications, right? You can look at a pointed number of people, you know, being suicidal when they've had childhood trauma. You can look at them being as alcoholics and tobacco users and people who put themselves in very dangerous sexual proclivities, right? I mean, that's so many things that happen because of the the impact of child abuse and trauma and you know i think that that's why education is so important because there are people that believe like spanking is the answer and i'm like well sure okay but then what if let's run this through a scenario i'm your boss and you work for me and you come into my office and because you sent the memo wrong i'm gonna punch you in the face <laughs> huh i wonder how that's gonna work out for you tomorrow you know what I mean? And so I think that there's there's something that has to be changed in the dichotomy of what we allow. And and it comes from this place of being willing to have difficult conversations like the I can tell you right now, the most polarizing thing I ever post on the Internet is that people who spank their kids are wrong. And it is just I mean, you talk about watching people just go to war. I stopped posting it because people are just going to war with each other. I was like, okay, this is interesting because it's so one-sided. People are all about it on either side of it. And look, at the end of the day, I let the research do the talking, yeah. right? The research says if children are hit when they are children, they will thus hit other people, right? right. They don't come and, out and, hitting each other. <laughs> yeah. And then you you ask yourself, well, why is my son or daughter in this domestic violent relationship? Because you hit them when they were kids. Why are they mean to their kids? Why are they yelling at them? Why do they scream at them? Why do they lock them in their rooms? Because that happened to them, right? It's it's a repeat. It's a cycle. It's trauma showing itself again. And then, you know, you add on different layers of trauma, whether you're a minority or whether you come from a family that's a single mother household, like most families in America, right? There's so much that gets carried with that. And to continue to 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 really perpetrate is the word I want to use here, violence against a child. Like you're being, uh, and look, I'm going to be straight up. You're being an idiot mm -hmm. because you have not educated yourself. You have not put yourself in a situation of understanding what you're actually doing, mm -hmm. right? You got all these adults like me walking around who have had to do the work, who've had to spend tens of thousands of dollars on therapy and coaching and personal development and self-help because I was 27 years old and I didn't know it was okay to be nice to myself. Right. And that's look at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the, the reality is this. It's hard. I will never argue with someone that it's hard to be a parent, but I promise you, you will get better results out of a child. If you talk to them, like they're a human being, as opposed to hitting them. Because I'm telling you right now, if you work for me and I punched you in the face, you're mm -hmm. probably not going to keep that job. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, growing up, I got I didn't get many because I didn't want them. You know, kind of like when you saw they saw Debo coming, you're like, you want some of this? No. So I made sure I steered clear to whoopings. 
But I thought they were the most ridiculous thing because you told me not to cry, but you wouldn't. I, like I could think of these things and I'm just like, makes no sense. Um, with me, I couldn't do it with, to my son because I, I feel like you have to be in the state of like pissed off or anger to do it because I can't see myself being like, I got to do this, you know, because, uh, you know, I feel like you have to be pissed and I don't think you should be pissed off when you're spanking your kid like you know then if you're calm then why do you still want to spank them so that that's that's a um a red flag to me to me too but i i was always told growing up even even older that it was supposed to be a, a discipline right so like say if you did something that was a uh, I don't know. Uh, you, you you went back to that store. And you stole again. You know, and I told you to stop stealing. Something like that. You can get your little spanking or whatever, right? And then now, then you just said like it just whatever. It just became a thing. Like whenever you did something wrong, you get a spanking. And I'm just like, why are you? That's to me. Why do you keep harming them? That's not love. You love them. You keep harming them every time they do something wrong. I know that has to be something that um you know I, I'm I can see it. You know I'm like this isn't love because. And I'm not saying that judging anybody, but somebody will probably tell me you'd whoop his ass. I'm like, well, you probably need to mind your business. I don't know. I'm not going to yeah. do that because you told and me. <laughs> one of the things that I think would be really important for in the context of this that people understand is, you know, when, when you hit a child, it's like you're putting a band aid on a problem, right? It's the same analogy I use often. Like you're you're not at the root cause of what's going on. Part of it is like if I was a kid right now, oh my god, it'd be so miserable. All they have to do is sit in a in like a classroom and be quiet. They don't have gym class anymore. They don't have art class anymore. They don't have a way to get the energy out. All we're feeding them is poison, right? And then they come home, they're on their phones, they have access to porn earlier than probably ever in history. They're always in a position where they're hyper aware. They got to be worried about keeping up with these TikTok stars who don't actually matter. It's incredibly chaotic. And then you're wondering why they have behavioral disorders and you're hitting them as a solution. That's like getting shot in the chest and putting fucking gauze on it and hoping that it stops. Like that's not the root cause. The root, like if you want to get to this, if you want to get to this place where you can create change in your child and you're trying to help them be better, be different, you got to talk to them. Yeah. You got to figure out what's going on. And when you do this, you got to shut up and you got to listen because they are human beings with human emotions, having a human experience. And so in that, like it's, it's real. Like I think about this quite frequently, like it's really interesting to me that children are growing up in a way in which they're being influenced by the media at a greater scope than ever. Children are terrified right now. Am I going to get COVID? Am I going to get murdered? Am I going to end up sex trafficked? Yeah. Right. It's not what it used to be. And you're trying to solve problems in an archaic way. This is why I'm reframing it as you're an idiot, because you are lacking education. Go get educated. Read the research. Make intelligent choices about what you're doing. And I know I'm telling you, for you who are going to email me and be like, who are you? Shut up. I'm going to respond to you. I promise. <laughs> Feel free. Because guess what? I'm telling you I'm right. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. The research points to it. You can have healthy, viable, productive children without hurting them first, right? This is how kids end up in bad relationships. This is how kids end up mm -hmm. in positions of danger. This is how kids end up doing things that don't make sense when they sabotage themselves and have to listen to a podcast like this to figure out how to get their life back on track. How about you mitigate the risk of that chaos? That's what I'm about. Yeah, yeah. They don't want to hear it because they this because then they'd have to admit that they probably well admit it. Like <laughs> look, life is about change. Exactly. Change your mind. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Because look, if you're the same, I'll tell you this: if you're the same person tomorrow that you are today, you are not winning. Okay. Change your mind. It's fine. I promise you, I've changed my mind every single day about stuff. It's fine. You should be evolving. That's the point. Yep. Ongoing thing, on to ongoing, ongoing. It doesn't stop me. If it does, then you're why are you here? Not like that though, but like no, really, <laughs> like if you're not growing, then you're not knowing. But yeah, the the I, I just I don't know. I, it scares me with the children a lot because uh, it breaks my heart because I know with the distance and the uh, not being able just to run back out into the world and do, you know, or be with his friends or whatever it is he wants to do. 
and he's a teenager, I, I feel for him, you know? So I talk to him and I'm like, tell him like, look, you know, I'm finding ways to work. Like we'll sit down, we'll work something out, you know, we'll see what we can do because I, I want him to, I don't want this world to be a world where my son, he's finally a teenager. He wants to do these things. And now he can't because the world decided to go and, you know, become stupid and no one can think for themselves, you know? But uh, it's gotten scary for me too, as a parent, when I watch these kids that watching all this social media and all the creepy stuff they do on social media and it influences them. And then you take that, but all the stuff they're seeing going through in the house, and then they go out and um, do these things, hurt their friends, set them up, do uh, the things that I've seen lately. And I just, it terrifies me. And I'm saying, I, I got to do something. We got to have these conversations. I tell parents, you need to be looking to see what they're doing online. Like, pay attention, ask them questions. Yeah, you can be nosy. You know, you have to do these things. They're children, they don't know. And right now they're lonely and they'll take to, they're not, you know, so many kids committed suicide. Yeah, it's it's hard, right? It's a hard world we live in when you're in this position and you're looking at life as like, what's next and what do you do? And I, I think ultimately, you know, it's about support. It's about coming together. It's about creating change. And it's about, most importantly, it's about education. And I, I think that, you know, having people who are on similar missions as us, that is how you change the world, my friend. Sorry. <laughs> Didn't plan for that. <laughs> Never do. You're having a human experience. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. It just breaks my heart, you know. But um, I th I say every day, as long as I get up and I'm breathing, then that's then I'm always gonna keep going at it. So yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Um, God, goodness gracious, I'm not supposed to be over here crying in therapy. I'm supposed to be on my show. <laughs> I had questions. <laughs> oh goodness! I did, I did. I did want to ask you a question. I think there was actually some funny ones in there too. But what would what would Mike Michael now? What would he say to the to his younger Michael? Yeah, totally. And for sake of time, I'll, I'll keep it short. Um, I think the the most important thing that I would tell the younger version of myself is to just keep going. Just keep going. You'll figure it out. It'll get, it, you know, it, the easy answers will get better, but like, I don't know what that means. And I just go, it'll get different. Just keep going. Just keep going every single day. And every time somebody tells you, you're not going to be shit. Keep going. Awesome. You know, cause that helps me like be able to tell my son why he's, I just don't know. I just don't want to be, a, I don't want to screw this up. <laughs> You know, because I know I'm not perfect, you know? So I, like, always catch myself, like, when he says something, I'm like, ah. But, yeah, I just, oh. I didn't mean to cry, Mac. I know we're getting to the door. I, I am enjoying myself, but I'm going to freaking ask you these last two questions because there's supposed to be funny moments. <laughs> okay. If you were, yes, yes. This actually is kind of not funny, but kind of deep. If you were, if you were to throw a message in a bottle, into the ocean, what would it say? You know, I, I think, and, and I wrote this in my book, and I don't know how relative it would be because it would depend on where it ended up, but, you know, ultimately it would be this. Though trauma may be our foundation, it is not our future. I like that. I like that. Okay. So if you, okay, if you, if you were to be able to ask any question and it was asked, it was answered to you correctly, who would you, what would you ask and to who? And you knew you were going to get the, uh, the answer. What question would you ask? Yeah, I would, I would definitely sit down with Jay-Z and, and the most simple thing that I would ask him is I would ask him, what is the difference between failure and success? Hmm. 
is success is is with the difference be because one of them because you didn't stop oh because when you fail that means you didn't try again right and you yeah, I, I don't know maybe i'll get to sit down and ask him yeah, yeah we so my, so my to-do list right right he's so busy he probably tried his arm and a leg <laughs> that's all right good he deserves to right well i really really in this was like gold and i knew this was going to be something good um when i saw what it takes to get on your show but we'll talk about that later <laughs> oh shoot but yeah thank you so much michael and i just um i want to keep in contact because i know that you have to be put yourself around people that you know like-minded people or, or that have that energy that you have that I don't really have a lot. And um, I just I just want to cry again. I did not expect this to happen, but uh, I just want to say thank you for taking the time out to come on here and um, to share with my audience and with me. Yeah, it's my pleasure, my friend, anytime. Thank you so much. Thank you. And everybody else, you know I'm a crybaby, okay? And um, <laughs> so Michael, can you please bless us really quick with all of your social media where we can find you? So if we want to listen to your podcast, check you out. Yeah, I'm I'm at Michael Unbroken everywhere. Um, and then you can check out my podcast. It's called Think Unbroken. Um, that's at thinkunbroken.com. Um, and everything is there for you. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you so much. And hopefully until next time. <laughs>